Welcome back to the garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, which has gotten a little out of control in spots and some control needs to be added. There's gonna be a series of videos here coming up. I've got a grapevine to prune and a few other spaces that we need to kind of get a little bit of control added here in the garden. This group of giant zinnias, which have been, you know, absolutely fantastic all season long. We had such a cool spring. Normally for us, the giant zinnias here will get a lot of growth out of them in the spring. They'll bloom like crazy. Normally sometime around mid July, they're pretty burned out. They actually look, still look pretty good here, but there was always a plan in this space to have the giant zinnias for the first half of the growing season and then have lantana, which comes up in the middle of it, uh, take over, you know, pull the zinnias and then the lantana will take over the bed for the rest of the summer, right up until frost. Uh, and what's happened is they've both just raced each other and they've become just a giant mass. There's a couple conifers in here that are being covered up by this stuff. And so it needs, again, I just, I got to get these zinnias out. I want to prune this lantana back a little bit. The, uh, there, we still have some zinnias on the other side of the driveway over there and they still look good. We normally will leave these types of seeding uh, flowers, this stuff in the aster family uh, here in the garden to set seed because the goldfinches absolutely love them. But we have a ton of cone flowers, black eyed Susans, uh, Verbena benariensis, all kinds of things out here that they're taking advantage of. Tithonia, uh, just on and on. So they have more than enough uh, seed out here to keep them occupied. And we have goldfinches out here all day long. I'm gonna go through here first and cut the, get some cut flowers out of these zinnias. They make great cut flowers. So I'm gonna cut all the ones that are in really, really good shape. Then I'm gonna pull the plants. You'll be surprised how big some of these plants are. And then get in here and cut this lantana back a bit, reshape it. It's got, again, it's, it'll be blooming probably until November here in our area. So it, it can take a little bit of a cut now and come right back out of it and be blooming later in the season. So that's step number one. All this space was amended with compost several times now, and there was a giant maple tree that had the stump ground in this space in the past, and this soil is just super rich and super loose. Uh, so the zinnias just pull up really, really easily. It's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward, easy job. You might want to wear gloves, especially if you're working with lantana. It has little spiny edges on it, and occasionally I'll have a little bit of a, an issue with it. Uh, I rarely wear gloves. I rarely take the time to go get gloves, but uh, I, I probably would with lantana. So I've taken pretty much all the flowers off of it, uh, but it's in the full sun, absolute full sun where it's sitting all day long. Uh, the sun kind of tracks just past, you know, just over this spot. And so it'll have plenty of sun. It's got a giant root system because it's been here a couple of years. This thing will be in full bloom and it'll fill the space back out within just a few weeks. When you're pulling out something like zinnia, those zinnias that have powdery mildew, 
if you have the ability to compost them in hot compost, meaning it actually comes up to a you know, high temperature and compost, you can kill a lot of those disease related problems or you know, fungal problems, whatever it is, through your composting. If you don't have that ability, you might want to dispose of them in some other way or you know, make sure that you're not just recycling the same diseases into the same space. We'll put it on our uh, uh, pile back there, but which I'm, at some point we'll have a, uh, a compost pile that we can heat up and reuse that material because it's a giant pile on the driveway. If you look down here in front of the uh, lantana, the two conifers that are there now have plenty of breathing room. Uh, they'll be much happier overall. That yellow flowering annual is called Melonpodium, and it's self-seeding. Uh, generally, we just go through the garden and pick out ones we don't want and let the other ones grow uh, because they are just great little uh, flowering annuals that never, ever, ever stop flowering. This uh, behind me, uh, back here, you can see once you start in on a project like this, I found, one, I found several giant weeds in here, including a mulberry that was about this tall that I just pulled. But then there's a, a big pokeweed uh, back in this section. And I, I'll never get these out by the roots. No matter how soft the soil is, this pokeweed will be back <laughs> once they get this size on them. Uh, you can choose to leave these. I've got a neighbor that has one that he's just perennialized next to a city sign and ties it up there. Uh, every year and the flowers are great for the pollinators and the birds eventually come along and uh, and take those uh and take those berries on them but again it's producing seed that's going to be you know everywhere uh, so i'll let you decide that these are leanne clara back here and all the new growth on this plant has a bronzy coloration and the purpose of these back here is just to be an evergreen backdrop to all of these other seasonal things, the zinnias, the lantana, the melonpodium, all the flowers that we have in this bed, and it stays evergreen. Uh, right, so we went probably uh, two months of letting them grow like this uh, with that new growth, and now they just kind of look uh, a bit out of control. So I'm gonna give these a slight haircut. Within two weeks, the new growth will start throughout the plant again, and it'll be that bronzy color uh, again. We can do this a couple times a season. And all I'm going to do literally is just give these, these uh, clay era, you can just, you know, meatball uh, like a box would without any, pro without any problem. If you want to, you can follow these spiky limbs down into the plant a little bit, and that'll slow this process of them continuing to spike up like that. But really, I'm just trying to get this down back to where it looks halfway under control because we are losing control of this bed uh, this summer. I'll go through here with, the, with, a, uh, with a rake and just pull this material off the top of it to the side. On a, this foliage is perfect on these plants. I'll just let this material mulch them. You know, if it falls down here in a spot that is kind of hidden away from everything else, I'll just let it lay there. I don't need to, I don't feel the need to clean up every little piece and every little leaf that I cut off of it. It's perfectly good mulch to, you know, I had a row of uh, ligustrum at the old house and we, uh, anytime I prune them, I just let that material be its mulch. It never got any other mulch than its own material being cut off the plant. So it's the nutrients were being returned uh, to the plant. I'm gonna jump to the other side and cut on the other side uh, between these and some abelia. We have five of these Leanne Clairas planted through here. I think it's gonna go down to three uh, this fall or winter. In the meantime, I'm just gonna kinda get, get, some, get some institutional control over them. Uh, but it is, five is too many. It was always too many. We, we knew that three years ago or two and a half years ago when they went in and it's no big deal. Uh, we can use them as screening plants out on the edge of the property. These Leanne Clara will take part shade uh, or full sun conditions. I've even seen them do quite well in the shade, but they'll get a little thin down at the bottom. Uh, that already looks better. Again, I gotta take the rake across the top of it and knock the material down. The abelia over here have a little bit of spiky growth on them, but not terrible. I'll get in here, I'll show you in just a second and cut that material down.
we do these jobs out in the garden uh, early, early in the morning. The sun is just starting to come over an oak tree across the street because the afternoons are, you know, pretty much a muggy mess. And even here at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, drop get into a sweat really quickly. These radiance abelia are the other kind of evergreen piece to the middle of this bed. So it turns this side of the bed, which is all annual color, uh, you know, it looks fantastic. Bees are all over it, pollinators all over those things all day long, uh, hummingbirds out here all day long. And then we have, you know, evergreen, evergreen, evergreen uh, shrubs kind of in the middle of it so that when everything goes to sleep, there is some sort of bones here in the garden. These abelia are in full bloom right now, which is hard to tell on radiance because the blooms are white and the variegation is white <laughs> or off, off white. Uh, so I'm not going to do any kind of general pruning on these at all because I don't want to take all these flowers off. And now we are at the beginning of August here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit late for them to reset and, and flower again. They probably will, but it would be late. That lantana will just jump back so fast uh, that it won't matter. So all I'm going to do here is just take these this spiky growth that we'll see on these types of abelia and just cut it further down into the plant. Again, I just use this material uh, to mulch itself. So I've got a little gap right here between the Clayera and the uh, and the Abelia, <laughs> and I'll just put it down there, and uh, it's gone. Right? It's 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 out of out of sight, out of mind. It'll break down. The plants will uh, use its own nutrients. I'm really close to the bees. The bees are just waking up, so we're gonna get this job. Another reason to get this job done early, because they wouldn't want me standing right here next to them doing this job, especially taking their one of their favorite flowers away. But, but you see how just a significant change that makes. I didn't meatball them. You know, it still got a little bit of a natural look to it, uh, you know, and, but all this spiky kind of growth is gone. And again, it's just tucked under here mulching itself whole thing looks so much better i'll take the opportunity to pull this red bud <laughs> we'll get red bud weeds uh red bud this is a native red bud but they come up as weeds all over the garden because we have a giant one on the back corner of the house we put up the 10 things we're doing in the garden during the month of august or otherwise known as the august garden checklist video uh, before you see this video and i talked about pruning some in that video and the timing that you're doing it a lot of these evergreen shrubs like that Clayera, typically I don't want to cut very late in the summer because the new growth that's going to come back out on it, I've now stimulated growth on that plant. Will it have time to harden off before we get a hard freeze? You know, that's the, that, that, that's the question. So I'm, I'm on the verge of being very late uh, pruning that plant. The pruning I did on the abelia, this one branch at the time type of pruning, uh, don't stress over that type of pruning. I get that all the time. You know, I got a crazy limb on this tree. I got a crazy limb on this shrub. You know, I got, I got this whatever kind of branch. Cut those things off anytime. If it's not an integral part of the plant and, you know, it's not stru you know, structurally making the plant weak or whatever, you can prune those things 12 months out of the year typically. Uh, so don't, just don't stress over those things. So the abelia, I didn't do any kind of general pruning on it. I just took those crazy limbs off. Uh, no big deal. The lantana has more than enough time to bloom. It'll be blooming right up until November unless we happen to get some kind of weird uh, early frost this year. And now it'll be more, a little more contained. It was racing for light with those zinnias, which was making it oddly tall. This is um, uh, Chapel Hill Miss Huff is this variety. There are a list of maybe, I don't know, up to eight or so lantana that I know to be very, very reliable. This one has been extremely hardy. This is only two plants and it is just cr amazing. It'll, it would feel, if I didn't have these other conifers and things to protect and didn't plant those zinnias in here, it would fill this entire space up five feet tall in a single season. And it doesn't even leaf out until almost May. It's one of the very last things that will wake up here in our garden in Raleigh and it can grow that much in a season. So this one's extremely hardy. Miss Huff, uh, New Gold, which is a low growing yellow one, uh, Chapel Hill Gold, uh, and uh, Miss Huff, there's one called Carlos that has a similar flower color to this, kind of a pink, uh, that's fantastic. 
but just added a little control uh, to a bed this morning. I uh, haven't heard anything. I've left some, you know, left some color here, left plenty of things throughout this garden uh, for pollinators. And I feel like I've rescued a few of my permanent pieces, which is things like that abelia and that clayera. You know, this stuff leaning on them is not the best, uh, the best thing. So there's gonna be several more of these videos trying to add some uh, institutional control to the garden here in Raleigh. Thanks for watching.